Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today I have another very easy, very delicious keto holiday cookie recipe for you. Today we are going to make ginger, ginger spice cookies, also known as ginger snaps. Very easy, very delicious. And if you want a printable version of this recipe, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots, lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and help support the channel. So while we do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Line two large baking sheets with parchment paper and set them aside for just a minute. In a large mixer bowl, combine 116 grams or around one cup of coconut flour, 126 grams or around two thirds cup of the granulated sweetener of your choice. I'm using granulated monk fruit sweetener. You can use whatever granulated sweetener you want. You can also adjust this more or less according to your taste and how sweet you want your cookies. Add five grams or around one teaspoon of baking powder, one fourth teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of ground ginger, more or less according to how much ginger flavor you want in your cookie, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, again more or less depending on how much of a spiced taste you want in your cookies. Sift or whisk these all together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add two large room temperature eggs, make sure they are room temperature so that they stir in more smooth. Stir the eggs into the dry ingredients until everything is fully combined and the dry ingredients have been lightly moistened with the eggs. If you need to, you can use your fingers to make sure that all the dry ingredients have been lightly moistened. Add 3 fourths cup of room temperature butter that's been slightly softened. Make sure it's just softened, not melted. Stir the butter in just until it starts combining with the other ingredients. Then use your hand and knead the butter into the ingredients until all the butter is fully combined and you have a soft, smooth texture beginning to form. Make sure that you really knead this well for at least 30 seconds. You don't want any chunks of butter to be hiding in your dough. Butter's good for doing that when it comes to cookies. It's good at hiding. So you really do need to make sure you are kneading and massaging the dough, making sure that all of the butter is fully incorporated. Add 60 milliliters or around one fourth cup of the keto maple syrup of your choice. You can use my maple syrup recipe or Lakanto has a really nice monk fruit sweetened maple syrup. Add one teaspoon of vanilla or maple extract. You can use more or less of the extract depending on how much of a dominant vanilla or maple flavor you want. And one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. Now I know this sounds like a really strange thing to put into your cookies, but it will not make your cookies taste like vinegar. The purpose of adding it is to help with the crisping process. Coconut flour baked goods do not crisp up hardly at all. And so in order to get any type of a crisp or snap to these ginger snaps, the coconut flour needs a little bit of help. So that is why we add the keto syrup and the apple cider vinegar. They both are to help give a little bit of a snap to the ginger snaps. Stir everything all together until it's all fully combined and you have a smooth, slightly moist dough. Once it's all combined, form the dough into a smooth ball. Then massage the dough in your hands for about one minute. This is to make sure of the texture and to make sure that all of the ingredients are fully incorporated. You should have a lightly moist dough. It should not be sticky. If it's sticking to your fingers at all, then you need to add just a tiny bit more 
coconut flour, if it seems like it's crumbly and not forming a ball well, then you need to add a tiny bit more oil or warm water. Once you've massaged it for about a minute, form it back into a ball and put it back into your mixing bowl. Then place it in the refrigerator and allow it to chill just for about five minutes or so. This is so the dough can dry out just a little bit. That way you can have a more firm cookie, which will again help it to get a little bit of a crispness to it. After five minutes, remove the dough from the refrigerator. Then you're going to test the dough by taking a small portion of the dough and rolling it around in your hand. You want to make sure that you have the right texture, that the dough didn't dry out too much in the refrigerator or anything. So if the dough is coming together in a smooth ball very easily, then you know that you have the right texture. If it doesn't seem to be holding its shape, it seems to be falling apart or crumbly, then you need to add a little bit more oil or water. Scoop the dough out one tablespoon at a time onto your lined baking sheets. Roll each scoop into a tight, smooth ball. Then press each dough ball into a flat disc of your desired shape and size. The thinner you press out your cookies, the more crispy they're going to get after they've cooled. So if you're wanting to get that, that snap or that little bit of crisp to your cookies, then I would suggest shaping them into more of a thin disc. You don't want them completely flat. You want them to have a little bit of a lip to them. Otherwise, they're not going to look like a cookie. But as I said, the thinner you press them, the more crispy they become once they've cooled. Just keep in mind that coconut flour cookies do not crisp up the same way as cookies that are made with white flour and white sugar. Excuse me. Once your cookies are all pressed out to your desired thickness and desired shape, Place them in your preheated oven and bake at 350 degrees for 12 to 14 minutes or until the cookies have darkened around the edges. Once they're done baking, remove them from the oven. The cookies will be very soft, but they will firm up as they cool. So allow them to cool on the pan for at least 10 minutes or until they are firm. Once they've cooled on the pan for 10 minutes, Transfer them to a wire rack. Now your cookies are not going to be crisp yet. They still are going to be fairly soft. They'll be firm, but they still will be a little bit on the softer side. As they cool, they will crisp up more. So once they are completely cooled, they will have a nice little snap to them. As I said, they don't crisp up the exact same way as a traditional ginger snap recipe would wood, but you still get that nice ginger taste and that nice little snap to it. Once they've cooled completely on the wire rack, you can eat them immediately just as they are, or you can sprinkle them with some cinnamon sugar or some powdered sweetener. If you do have any leftovers, store them in an airtight container at room temperature for up to one week. I will give you a heads up though, if you do store these in an airtight container at room temperature, they may lose some of their snap because that's just unfortunately what coconut flour does because of the fact that you have to use so much liquid in it. You can store these in the freezer. They will not freeze solid, but you'll still have a little bit of a snap to them. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.